Hello, Eagles fans. I'm Chris McPherson, and welcome to our continuing coverage of Super Bowl 52 here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. And I'm joined today by Steve Weish, phenomenal analyst for NFL Network. It's been too long, man. It has it's been. It's been a minute. I know. We were talking about it. They don't send me out east anymore. And, you know, we've got other people like Mike Garofolo and everyone who's jacked my Eagles coverage. But <laughs> so good He's to a Philly guy. Here. He's a Philly guy. It has nothing to do with the price of tea in China, man. No, it certainly does I not. I need so. to be there with you guys. We missed the connection, so. Yes. Now, one thing I want to ask you, since you have been kind of away from the Eagles for a little yep. bit, Eagles go on this amazing run, 13-3, and three, even after losing all these players, awesome players during the course of the season from Jason Peters, Darren Sproles, and, yep. of course, Carson Wentz. What's it been like from the national perspective seeing them overcome the injuries and still make it here to Minneapolis for the Super Bowl? That's a great question because it's funny when I – you look at other teams, well, they've overcome this injury. Overcome. People don't talk about that with the Eagles except for when Carson Wentz went down. You know, they talk about how Nick Foles stepped in. Then, then, you know, he didn't have a couple good games. Okay, his supporting cast was there for him. But you didn't hear about some of the other injuries, and I think part of it was because we were so fascinated with the awesomeness of Carson Wentz. I mean, this guy is so special, and that's when he went down. I was at that game in Los Angeles when he hurt his knee. Um, it, was, it was sickening. That was an interesting – it was like Deshaun Watson. Yes. I've never seen a collective groan around the NFL. When Carson went down, people were like, oh, my. God. And, and I don't think it was just because he's such a special player, but I think because that carpet ride that the Eagles had generated. I mean, they are such a great team. And people are like, this is what's going to derail them. This is going to keep this great team out of the Super Bowl. And now they're able to overcome it. What Nick Foles and this team did to a darn good Minnesota Vikings team was so impressive. If they come out and play like that, this is going to be a fantastic Super Bowl, and I think it's going to be a great Super Bowl. Um, but again, the national perspective, I think a lot of folks believe in the Eagles, and after that performance in the NFC Championship, I think a lot of people believe in Nick Foles. I don't, I don't think they feel that they can win despite him. I think he feels they, people feel that they can win with him. Steve, does that make Doug Peterson's job this season that much more impressive? I'm trying to build yes. a case for. No. I'm really trying to build a case for Coach of the Year for. Well, he's man. not going to win it. You know, he's I, not going to win it. But I should I, win it. That's that's why I'm still pounding the drum. The honors are still a little bit of time away. Yeah, so okay. I know the votes are in. No, okay. I, I think it's situation. You're the insider. You, I'm sure you probably already know. So. I know. I don't know the vote. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, people are going to see yeah. what Sean McVay did with the Rams. Of course. Or, and what Doug Marone did with the Jaguars. Um, and but, but what Doug Peterson has done, which which is amazing. One, he's he's accepted the growth, his growth as a coach. You know, he will, you, you can sit there and he, and he talks about some of the things he learned and, and the trusting of his staff and getting guys to really buy in it's just fantastic but his development of some of the players um bringing in all the question coming to the season who are the eagles corners going to be you know who, who's going to step up at wide receiver now they go out and they get him some veteran wide receivers they get him alshon jeffrey tory smith move nelson aguilar into the slot just fantastic the aggression he calls plays with like you said they lose jason peters the way they redesign things and you know they, they put big v in there they don't move lane johnson over which everyone thought they were going to do that's faith in your personnel that's letting the guys know that you trust them, and that's coaching them up. And after the Carson Wentz thing, they didn't radically change their, their offense. No. Look at so many teams that lost quarterbacks this year, and they pretty much threw in the towel. I mean, there were some teams where you're just like, they're not even really trying anymore. Doug Peterson's like, we got something here. And as great of a player as Carson Wentz is, we've got some other great players too. We owe it to them to keep the foot on the gas. He's, he's been fantastic. Now, Steve, you've been embedded with the Patriots yep. throughout the course of the playoffs here, so I want to get a different perspective sure. of this team. When you look at the Patriots, how remarkable is it that they've been able to overcome the deficits late in games like they did in the AFC Championship? It just seems like that when the game's on the line, nothing rattles them whatsoever. It's, it's what they do. They don't flinch. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, I've actually, in my preparation for some of my Sunday coverage, I've spoken to a lot of coaches who've faced them. And they're kind of like, you know, they spend the first quarter, the first half just figuring you out, just kind of deciphering what you do. And so you're trying to get creative at halftime. You're like, okay, they're going to try and do this to us, and, and then you get out of your game, and then they got you. And it, you said the, the amazingness of what they do and the adjustments. And then you've got number 12. You've got Tom Brady, who is the he's – seen, he's seen every scenario, and his poise allows everybody else to step up. I mean, Danny Amendola may not do anything for three quarters. But at the end, with two minutes, he's going to make the great catch. Or Brandon Cooks is going to make the great catch to move the chains. And I, and I call Brady the ultimate kingmaker in terms of there's a lot of guys you would not hear of if not for him. So their composure, their coaching, 
um, and just their preparation for every scenario. And every team prepares for every scenario, right? But there are just some teams that just don't execute in the moment, and they do it every time. It is stunning, and the, the respect you have to have for them uh, from that perspective, no matter whether you love them, hate them, the respect you have to have for their ability to play in the clutch should be just off the charts. Since you've seen them against the Titans mm -hmm. and the Jaguars in the playoffs, do you get a sense that the opposing coaches change what they do? I looked at that Jacksonville game, yep. and it seems like that they had a formula that was working for the better part of three-plus quarters. Then all of a sudden, you mentioned taking your foot off the gas. They kind of did that a little bit and you know, kind of left a little bit of the door open there for the Patriots. Do you sense that teams tend to do that? All, all the time. It? All the time. Now, Tennessee was just overmatched, and Marcus Mariota got hurt, and he couldn't run. Um, but talk about not running. I mean, Blake Bortles, part of his success this year was running those RPOs. We love to hear the Eagles course, talk certainly, about. Yes. Um, he didn't run. He didn't run against the Patriots. I'm sitting there watching. It was there all day, and for whatever reason, he didn't run. Was that coaching saying don't do it, or was it him just feeling reluctant to, to take off and use his ability? I don't Feeling know. the pressure of thinking that he can't win from the pocket. Right, but they didn't show confidence. And remember, the last 55 seconds left in the first half, they have the ball in like their 30. They could get two plays, go down and kick a field goal. They took a knee. Yeah. Whereas we go back later that Phil night, Philadelphia gets the ball with a minute left, boom, goes right downfield, puts points on the board, and just rubs it in. And that goes to show the difference. You know, and to go back with the changes too, Jags players after the game were like, after Gronk went out, we went into his own. Like, why would we do that? Yeah. And that's when Brady picked them apart. So a lot of times coaches outsmart themselves when they're playing the Patriots instead of just doing what's working and letting players play football. That's why I'm intrigued to see what Bill, not Bill, Bill Belichick, but Doug Pearson is going to do because he's been so aggressive throughout the course of the season to get him to this point, going for it on fourth down and taking chances when other teams would. And you mentioned the end of that first half against the Vikings. You hope that he doesn't change his style. He won't. They're, they're, I mean, this is what him being a player, being with guys like Brett Favre, um, I think that's where he's just like, I love this team. I know my guys. Why would I change in a moment like this? Because the second I do, that's when the bubble bursts. That's when everyone's just like, what is he doing? So he's not, I, 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 there's no way he changes. He's going he to coach how he's coached, and if they get beat, then, then so be it. You know. Steve, my last question for you is this. Do you sense that this could be an end of the line for the Patriots? And I mean that from the standpoint of, looks like Matt Patricia is getting the Lions yep. job. Josh McDaniels is getting the Colts job. You know, there's been reports of friction within the organization between Kraft and Belichick and Brady and Brady's trainer. Do you sense that this could be kind of a final run for them? No. It, losing two coordinators is going to be devastating. That's a big blow to lose at one time. So I think that's where things could come uh, a little unhinged. But Belichick's coming back. Brady's coming back. Um, and then you say to yourself, you look around the rest of the AFC, okay, are the Steelers going to knock them off? I mean, how many times have we said, okay, the Patriots are vulnerable. This is the year the Chiefs are going to get them. The Patriots are vulnerable. This is the year. And then Doesn't what happens? Happen. It's just, I, I don't think, I do think, it, you know, we're starting to see some of the bricks come out of the wall and maybe some team can rise up. But you're going to be like me. When push comes to shove, if they start out one and three and everyone's like, oh, my God, they're falling apart. No. You are going to be just like me, like, you know, by the end of the season, they're going to be there. The Dolphins aren't going to beat them in the, in the division. The Bills aren't going to be – Jets aren't going to be able to get into the playoffs, and that's when they'll be the – I, I wondered – I mean, they were blown out by the Chiefs in week one. Yep. The Panthers beat them in week four. They were two and two. The defense was struggling. They were starting to turn a corner. But you, you still wonder at some point you feel like the rugs got to come out from under them. Well, it's, it is, and it's going to come out when Tom Brady retires. Because as long as you've got – again, I talked about he's the ultimate kingmaker. He's – name me one – name me one – Hall of Fame player that Tom Brady's played with. Maybe Ty Law gets in. He's a DB. Name me one offensive Hall of Famer. Gronk, if he stays healthy for another year or two. Randy Moss, but it was the but that was one year. year. It was one year. Outside so, of that. So you look what time. Yeah. As long as you've got that guy, you've got a shot. Steve Weiss from NFL Network does a phenomenal job. Even though he's covering New England this week and not the Philadelphia Eagles, still provides outstanding analysis. Make sure to check out NFL Network's coverage. Eight and a half hours pregame. Got a lot of stories to bring your way, and they're going to be on live post game as well. Thank you all for joining us here from the Mall of America as we continue our coverage of Super Bowl 52 here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com.